The Los Angeles Chargers finished the 2022 regular season with a 10-7 record and made the playoffs for the first time in the Justin Herbert era. Typically, it's hard to be disappointed about winning 10 games and making the playoffs for the first time with your franchise quarterback, but based on how the Chargers season ended, they were certainly disappointed. They lost in the wildcard round of the playoffs to the Jags with a score of 31-30, and it wasn't just a one-point loss. It was the third biggest blown lead in NFL playoff history, and this was after having a 27-point lead with two minutes left in the first half and a plus-five turnover margin. It's truly hard to do that in one game, but that's how the Chargers 2022 season ended. And they are entering 2023 extremely pissed off and ready to get back at everyone that clowned them, mocked them, called Justin Herbert the next Phillip Rivers, meaning he's good, but he's not suited for the postseason, and he'll never win the big game and everything in between. And Chargers fans, please know that will be the last time we mention the wildcard game in today's video. But like we hear every year with the Chargers, they won the offseason and they're ready to take the next step. But will they actually do it this time? Well, that's what we're going to break down in today's video. Now let's begin. And we are starting today's video by discussing what one of the biggest differences between the 2022 Chargers and the 2023 Chargers will be, and that's how franchise quarterback Justin Herbert is going to be used. And contrary to what people may think, especially when they see the Justin Herbert highlights or the big time throws, 2022 Justin Herbert was a ton of him being a check down Charlie. And that's a gripe with play calling and obviously not a gripe with Justin himself. The team's previous offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi loved calling short passing plays, and to give you an idea of how much he loved to call short passing plays, 446 of Herbert's 699 passing attempts last year were passes with a depth of either 0 to 9 yards from the line of scrimmage or even behind the line of scrimmage, and I'm sure there were times where Herbert felt like a thoroughbred horse stuck in the stall waiting to be let loose and to truly let it fly. And yes, he did have his occasional deep shots, but Justin Herbert finishing 23rd in yards per attempt in 2022 is something that will not happen in 2023. Three. And new offensive coordinator Kellen Moore will ensure of this. And for reference, Dak Prescott finished 13th in yards per attempt last year, with an average of half a yard more per passing attempt. And the Chargers recently gave Justin Herbert a contract north of $250 million, and they did not give him that contract with the vision of him finishing second in passing attempts with a depth from behind the line of scrimmage. And given everything Justin went through last year, whether it was him dealing with his fair share of injuries, most notably the rib injury, or having Mike Williams and Keenan Allen both miss time last year, as combined they played just 23 of the 34 possible games they could have played last year, and where 34 games comes from is 17 games apiece times two, for anyone wondering. And those two receivers missing time, despite how good each player is individually, is nothing new and the Chargers went out this offseason and drafted wide receiver Quinton Johnston in the first round. And if we can get a full 17 games of all three receivers on the field at the same time, combined with Austin Eckler out of the backfield, well, simply put, the 2023 Chargers offense is going to be dangerous, especially when they're in 11 personnel with Gerald Everett being used as a big receiver too. So we're talking about an offense with an elite pass catching back, a very good route running receiver in Keenan Allen, a guy who can go up and get the jump ball in Mike Williams, a first round receiver in Quinton Johnston who is a very good player and a guy I liked a lot coming out of TCU, and a mismatch at tight end who set career highs in receptions, receiving yards, and tied his career high in receiving touchdowns last year in, of course, Gerald Everett. The Chargers finished 13th in scoring last year, and the only thing stopping them from finishing in the top 10 this year is health. If they have multiple guys go down, well, like any team, they're going to be affected, and especially if it was Justin Herbert or franchise left tackle Rashawn Slater for the second consecutive year. 
And within the Chargers 2023 preview and team outlook, a lot of people naturally talk about Quentin Johnston because he is the prized first round pick, but I don't see a lot of people discussing just how much it's going to mean to the Chargers, and especially Justin Herbert, that Rashawn Slater is back. And with Rashawn Slater coming back, that will not only help out Justin Herbert, but should help out 2022 first round pick, left guard Zion Johnson too. Zion will have the opportunity of a career to play between Rashawn Slater and two-time All-Pro Corey Lindsley after not having a great rookie season. Zion allowed 40 pressures in his rookie year as well as 5 sacks, and there was definitely a learning curve for him. Jamari Sawyer picked up at left tackle when Slater went down for the year with a ruptured bicep and definitely went through his fair share of growing pains too, but with a year of experience under both of their belts, they should be ready to step up in 2023, and the Chargers will certainly need them to. Despite how complete the Chargers offense is, I would be very surprised if any of the receivers finished top 3 or 4 in any category, strictly because there are so many mouths to feed, but this may be a bold prediction, and we'll see how this fares by the end of the 2023 season, but I do think Justin Herbert will throw for over 5,000 yards for the second time in his career. There is a very good chance this team has two 1,000 yard receivers, but again, there is a difference between two 1,000 yard receivers and someone finishing in the top three or four at their position. Every team that finished second or worse in their division the year before has a simple goal heading into the next season beat the team that finished first in the division the year prior and to win the division so they can host a home playoff game. And for every year since Justin Herbert has been in the NFL, well, old Pat Mahomes, Big Red, Travis Kelsey, and the gang have taken the AFC West along with two Super Bowl appearances. And the Chargers are sick of looking up to Big Brother as they are 1-3 against them over the last two years. And speaking as a football fan, I absolutely love when these teams play, as does everyone else, but every Charger, both player and fan, are pissed off with how much the Chiefs win, and they think it's their time to win the AFC West. And getting off on the right foot is obviously key for every team, but it's especially key for the Chargers' success this year because they have a Week 5 bye, which is incredibly early for a 17-game season. Playing four games before the bye and 13 after with aspirations or intentions to play three or four more games after those 13 regular season games, meaning the postseason, is brutal for every player's body and especially with how the Chargers season ends. They have two home games in the final three, but they're no picnic as they play Buffalo in week 16, then go to Denver in week 17, then come home to play Kansas City in week 18. And generally speaking, I would be very surprised if either the Chargers or Chiefs have the division wrapped up by then and can afford to rest their starters for that final game, and there's a chance the week 18 game between the Chiefs and Chargers could be for the AFC West. And if the Chargers are going to have success this year, as in serious success well into January, one thing they're inevitably going to have to be better at in 2023 is running the football. This team averaged a measly 3.8 yards per carry in 2022, which ranked 30th in the NFL, and when you cannot consistently run the ball, most teams just don't, and because of this, LA finished 28th in rushing attempts and 30th in rushing yards. And when they're in this 13-game stretch to end the season, there's going to be games where LA will need to milk the clock and have a few comfortable wins to the point where head coach Brandon Staley can take guys out in the fourth quarter and give them any rest they can. 2023 will also be a career-determining year for cornerback JC Jackson. JC signed a five-year deal during the 2022 offseason for over $80 million after coming over from New England, and his first season in LA could not have gone worse. He had a season-ending injury, but even before that, he was getting picked on and allowed four touchdowns in five games, and per PFF, when he was targeted last year, he was allowing a 152.4 passer rating, and for reference, a perfect passer rating is 158.3. And I do like a lot of what the Chargers have done over the past few years in terms of how they've constructed their roster, and hand up, I like the JC Jackson signing when it was made, but they need him to step up this year, and if he does, the way we saw him during his time in New England, this defense could be and should be one of the better units in all of football. And like we seemingly say every year with the Chargers when it comes to their high preseason expectations, it boils down to them staying healthy, and especially from a pass rushing standpoint this year. 
Having Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack each for a full 17 games to get after the quarterback in the AFC is going to be huge, and there's a good chance each player has double-digit sacks this year. But one thing to remember, and all Chargers fans are certainly aware of this, the pass rush does not stop with just those two guys. Morgan Fox is a good veteran lineman, and he had six and a half sacks last year, and it was his second time in three years registering at least six sacks. Morgan also had 40 pressures in 2022, and anytime you can have a third guy generate 40 or more pressures in a season, especially when the top two pass rushers are multiple time pro bowlers, and in Khalil's case, a former defensive player of the year award winner, is huge. Because as we've said in time and time again on this channel, opposing offensive lines have to pick their battles, and whether it's Morgan Fox or rookie Tulai Tui Pelotu, these guys are going to have as favorable of a situation as a pass rusher could ever ask for. And for Tui Pelotu specifically, for him to walk into a situation at just 20 years old and to be able to learn from both Bosa and Mack. While he specifically may not have a great rookie season, this is a player I absolutely love in the future as he gets more accustomed to the NFL. And the Chargers had what I thought was a very underrated signing this offseason in middle linebacker Eric Kendricks. A lot of people will look at Kendricks and think he's washed because of how bad the Vikings defense was last year, and I would agree in the sense of I wouldn't want Kendricks one-on-one -on -one in man coverage with running backs at least not a lot in 2023, but he has has over 275 combined tackles over the past two years and is a good and very aware player to have in the middle of the defense. I also know Chargers fans have been frustrated with Kenneth Murray at times, and maybe this is a little bit of me hoping for the best here, but I can't imagine Murray regresses with Kendricks there and with all of the other good players around him on defense. Sure, Kenneth may never be a pro bowler or be truly worth a first round pick like they invested on him back in 2020, but I don't think he'll stick out like a sore thumb. This team allowed 30 points or more in 5 regular season games last year and were 0-5 in those games. And they finished 21st in defensive scoring last year and with players coming back, I would be very surprised if that happens again this year. And of course, we can't discuss the Chargers defense without mentioning one of the best players in all of football, that of course being Derwin James. The Chargers have one of the most complete rosters in the NFL, and there's a reason they're deemed offseason champs, or are a lot of people's preseason picks to win the Super Bowl every single year. But out of Justin Herbert, Darwin James, Joey Bosa, Rashawn Slater, and Keenan and Mike, only one of those players played all 17 games last year. And it seems like we say this every year with this team, but they need injuries to go in their favor. I have my concerns with Brandon Staley as a head coach and some of the in-game decisions he makes, and we'll see how that plays out in the 2023 season, but strictly from a talent standpoint, GM Tom Telesco has put together a Super Bowl winning caliber roster, and I think that's the best thing about the NFL, is nobody knows who's going to win heading into each and every game, because it is truly in any given Sunday league. This team won 10 games last year and improved from an overall roster standpoint and a coaching standpoint too, and if you picked them to be be your preseason Super Bowl winner, I wouldn't blame you as they can go a very long way. The team MVP, breakout player, ceiling, and floor are on the screen and I hope you enjoyed and if you did, please like the video and subscribe as only about 22% of people watching are subscribed and it makes a big difference. And until the next team preview, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.